cunning is just so deep and he's so entrenched in in because he's, he's, he's faced the worst, indomitable things, physical pain and torture in his life. Pain, torture, discomfort means nothing to him. So good to see you again. The wormhole technology I've waited so patiently for. I hit the ground running and I had him. I would go back and look and almost just that first second you see him is almost Excuse enough me. to go, wow, boom. Put that down to something special in sci-fi land for, for historical references. You know, I was just meant to do this guy. I have absolutely no doubt about it. Um, but I was the only guy to do it because it took so long to find me as well. You know, it was round three of testing to find me. And once they found me, you know, that was it. But no one thought of me, and I wouldn't have thought that I would ever do anything like it. But I look at those first four eps as well and go, wow. You know, I've even surprised myself just how clear the characterization was. I am Scorpius, but of course you are. The easiest choice was, uh, you know, a deeper voice. I have a pretty round sort of um, deep voice. So I, I just played with, with the high pitch thing, and it gives him a creepiness. We must know when to be strong and want to show compassion. Thank you. Thank you. As a matter of honor, sometimes we must be willing to give of ourselves. It's hard to connect with this thing that looks like that and speaks like that. I mean, uh... Hello, John. <gasps> growl and the deeper voice is the Scarron song. I found it. So, in a sense, it makes sense that the high-pitched voice has evolved because he's been resisting the Scarron side. He wants to go as far away as possible from this Scarron thing that he is. And he's ended up in there somewhere. That Commandant bitch will return here any time. I must be able to report success or she's going to scrap my wormhole project and soon the Scarrons will rule half this galaxy. <laughs> oh, Grasshopper, you're so screwed. We see him lose control with Crichton in season three, but it's only in front of Crichton. Season four, he loses control in front of others. And it's, this is in and around the flowers. And we see him, you know, lose that voice. And it's his scarring side. And he's been defeated in a funny way. He's defeated himself. And he's even displayed it to people. Didn't know about it. Stark didn't know about it. This must be a new addition by the Scarrons! He doesn't like to lose, does he? The voice, as I say, it's like a meter, you know? It's like a... Um, a f uh, at home we have, uh, like a... Like you, you, we have a meter for fire danger. It goes from green to red, you know? Uh, and it's, he's, he, so his voice is like a meter. When it's in the, in the, the high-pitched, he's in control and everything's going swimmingly. And uh, it's the Scorpy that, you know, we sort of love. Uh, when it's down in there, uh, fire is burning. It's a big brush fire and it's out of control. Um, but the guy that's powerful is the guy that is up in there. He's speaking high and is eloquent and, you know, takes his time. The rhythms are different, the whole thing. You think I'm bluffing? Do you want to die? I really can't remember when I first, you know, did the growl, etc. Uh, but it just seems so obvious. He actually has numerous voices. I promise you, the wormhole calculations you have in your mind. Who's there? 
Who's there? So I think the first time I actually used the, the growl voice was when he was on his own, actually. <sighs> One of those moments of frustration. So the only people who see it is the audience, which is great. It's like, oh, here's the scar in any Whoa, he is a beast. You leave me the hell alone. Or the next time we part, one of us will be dead. Bath. The audience sees that, no one else did. They're ahead of the pack. Oh, you cunning bugger. My earliest memory. Oh, God. It's pain. The two elements that make him up, the peacekeeper, the scarron, he's in denial of both. You know, he, he doesn't fall in either camp. He's had to forge an identity of his own. It's like in America, you know, with the notion of plastic surgery and the rest of it, people create another sense of themselves. And he's in that sort of area. What is that? My boy Scorpius. He's half scared and got a hell of a heat problem. Physically, he has changed his whole way that he looks. He's reptilian, I mean, each day he's, you know, depending on the conditions, how hot he is, you know, he's, looking different. That's him, he's, he's changing. He's like, uh, you know, not so much a chameleon, but depending on the physical, uh, environmental conditions, he might be really sweaty and you get that sheen effect that we had in season four, which we didn't have at the, at the top. It was like quite f flat. Uh, he's, yeah, he's a lizard. It's, it's a living thing, his skin and everything. And it's not, it's skin that's been tortured. It's, it, he's not meant to look like that. So I, I didn't, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I mean, everyone changes haircuts, etc. But he changes as well. It's not just like this flat, set piece of makeup. No, it's evolving all the time. Every day is different. I have chosen the name Scorpius. Interesting choice. So he's forged his own identity out of, out of resistance, out of uh, education. He's singular. He's on his own. He doesn't share anything with people or creatures, unless it's to, it's unless it's in a way of of him just to empower himself or to win a situation or he doesn't share things unless it's sharing something with John Crichton to get the wormhole knowledge. I have shared these memories for a reason. Intimacy, no, no, wrong, wrong. Intimacy is him in a room on his own with coolant rods, you know, trying to get cool. That's intimacy for him. Sorry to wake you, sir, but I think we've finally done it. He's self-sufficient in a way that no one actually understands in Farscape land or as an audience member. Well, obviously he identifies in Crichton with something in himself. Because Crichton is a singular being in our world of Farscape. Crichton. He's the only sort of being like Scorpius. Scorpius is a singular, singular entity. Uh, there is nothing, no reflection of Scorpius, as is there, there is no reflection of John Crichton in our world. So yes, he identifies with John Crichton and the struggles of Crichton. I am in control of me! No more John. Uh, Screw you! The reverse is more like. Maybe that's a part of the attachment. There's, no, there's more to just the want, the need of information and data. There is a real curiosity in the sense of, and in, in, in that, within that, there's a regard of, you know, this guy's struggle. I've never felt this connected, John. You're not going all mushy on me back there, are you? You know, the yin and yang thing, you know. They are one of maybe the same, me, maybe. Maybe that's where we were going, maybe. <laughs> you put something in my head. You know, we have had a, a chip in, in Crichton's head, Crichton's got to live with it. This is no time to be having fun, John. Get lost. You've got to focus. Scorpius is forever saying, you know, you know, 
don't be, don't be this person, don't be weak John, you know, don't, don't. It's like, you know, I'm trying to mould him, and he is, trying to mould him into the being that he wants him to be. You know, you're this, you're that. This is intolerable for both of us. End it, John. Free us from one another. Don't give me that human wishy-washy crap, <laughs> you know. It's not too late to change the outcome. Oh, you know everything about me. He's trying to mould him. But in and around that, he sees a sense of himself in John. And it's like, so it's reflective. It's like, well, I'm not like that. Nor should you be. <laughs> You want to be as potent as me? You want to survive in this world? You know, get with the picture. Braca? <laughs> He'll never bother you again. We had a, a chain and a dog collar. We put it on, and, you know, I'm standing there with a chain and dog collar. Well, and Rowan Woods was directing that particular episode, and we had a discussion, and, uh, and I filled Rowan in on, you know, we really, I'm not interested in looking good here, you know, we're not interested in looking good. In fact, we want to make him look as weak as possible. And I found myself on all four, fours uh, just by chance. And Rowan just said, that looks pretty good, give that a go. And that's what we went with. And it's great because the submissive thing with Bracker, you know, all of that, totally in submission. People had a big problem with it. Fans particularly did not like to see him turn down that much. But I want them to know that in the turning down, he's actually been turned up. And you get it when he's, he's in the grave, getting covered, you know, and he says, Faith, come back. It'll save you. Broker, wait. Skernak. What did you say? Skernak! Do not let them bury me. There's nothing wrong with him at all. And you know, in that moment you should get it. Uh, he's been playing the, and he's and they're burying him and he's he's like he's gonna be is he gonna be okay? Well, he was ultimately okay. Uh, this is the thing of you know Scorpius hero. They don't want to see their villain hero in such a predicament. But that's how cunning he is. That's how far he's prepared to go. He's so confident. He's prepared to give it all away. Give it all away. To ultimately win. But fans have, have had a big issue with it. I know it was the right choice. And it's creepy. It's really creepy. I mean, it has all those sexual undertones and it's creepy and, you know, a lot's been cut out, I've got to tell you. Uh, particularly looking at, uh, there's a lot of, of Bracker and Scorpius, Scorpio on his knees as, you know, as the puppy dog, uh, basically being voyeurs to uh, Grazer and Crichton. A lot of it's been cut out, because I was doing all this panting and mad shaking. You get a glimpse of it when I'm in the bunker and I lick her shoes. I mean, that was all me, you know, the licking of the shoes. Some people had, had a bit of an issue with that. Not fans, but some of my fellow actors. Uh, why are you doing that? You know, I'm selling it. I'm selling that he's, he's just so submissive to her. To her, the, the one person who he has no regard for. He's licking her feet. <laughs> uh, there's a lot cut out. I went further than we actually saw. So a lot of that is prob probably being sensitive to the audience, uh, but we get a pretty good taste, we probably get enough. Um, but they're the sort of days where some people probably walked away going, what's he doing now, you know? What's he doing now, he's out of control. Drink. I wanted to show him totally brain dead. He's gone. He's at every, anyone's mercy, beck and call. Uh, a lot of fans have big issues with that, seeing him uh, so suppressed, you know? But for me, it's like, that's how far he's prepared to go, to sell a lie. Does Grazer know you're my spy? No. But she'll figure it out when she discovers you're alive. She must never find that out. At the end of the day, he has no respect for anyone of a higher rank. No respect whatsoever. It's all about him and his agenda. Why should we care what insignificant systems think? 
we're uniting as much of the uncharted territories as possible to improve our bargaining position with the Scarans. The Council intends to negotiate. A truce is being explored. A truce won't prevent an invasion. As a show of weakness, it may even hasten one. He can play the game, as a politician plays the game. But underneath all of that, he's, he's really only looking after himself, as always. The only person he respects, if he has any respect at all, is John Crichton. John Crichton? Commander John Crichton. Generations will know that name. Because he hasn't got any rank. He's this Who's exotic creature. Very soon. The Scannons will destroy us. One evil at a time. Do you know why you're my second in command, Bracker? No, sir. Because you don't ask questions. Scorpius hasn't got friends in his world. And I don't even know if Bracker would qualify as a friend. <laughs> you. You're dead. Well, he's a pawn. He's a pawn that Scorpius certainly has empowered and has a sense of trust. I mean, they have a strong relationship. It seems as though he has a sense of his own ambition, but it is purely to serve the boss. And I think he's very loyal. For someone who's, who's such a snake, he's loyal to the boss, because he actually knows, you know, where his paycheck's coming from. If he, you know, he knows that this guy is, is the team to be on. Team Scorpy is the team to be on. Well done. Dave's very cheeky, and he's irreverent, I think. And you get that, which is great. There's fun, there's a glint in his eyes. Don't do this, Brecker, I made you. No, I made you. Which I think is a great balance to me, because I'm so still and, you know, serious. Um, so I think we have a really good balance, and physically, you know, there's a very, it's a very different thing to look at. Uh, Dave, you know, he's almost the archetypal uh, like Nazi in some regards, you know, the dark hair and he's, he's sharp and, you know. Um, but Dave has an irreverence and a lightness about his work and it's, it's cheeky, which I think is really great. Um, because again, that's, that's a thing that, that uh, like characters in scenes, they, they, I don't think they, people really take Bracker that seriously. That's what makes him powerful. You are officially authorised to take control of the situation as you see appropriate. Congratulations, sir. Well, he's more the Iago than Scorpius is, you know. If people think of Scorpius as Iago, no, he's not. He's more like a Othello, in a sense. He's the uh, Iago, uh, Bracker. Uh, he's the little cunning, sort of ambitious wheeler-dealer. Uh, but there's more going on than meets the eye. With Scorpius, you know what's going on. Uh, Scorpius isn't Othello, but he's more the Richard III or the Mac Mac Macbeth, you know. Uh, Whereas Bracker is certainly the Iago in Shakespearean terms. Grasshopper, tell me your plan for saving Earth. By a simple declaration of alliance, even infuriated, Empress Dalek would be forced to stay his attack, or by its inception, incur a war that he is still afraid of losing. Season four was probably, for me, my most problematic year. Um, by bringing me on board Moya, created a lot of problems for me as an actor. Um, I found myself in, in situations where I knew that I shouldn't be uh, privy to particular conversations or be in a room at a particular time. And I found it, I, I felt in my acting, and it's been confirmed since I watched the episodes, that he began, my acting style and him, he got more uh, naturalistic and more human. So we got away from him, his magic, I thought. Then there were some magic moments of, again, problems, where we solved the problem on the floor. You could do it with some assistance. Do you really think our relationship has progressed that far? There's the guys in the big suits who are actually Scarons on board Moya. And Crichton gives me a weapon. Gives me a weapon and I'm behind him. And Benny on the day said, you know, I wouldn't give Scorpius a, a weapon. And I just made this offhand comment. Well, you know, maybe it's got blanks in it. Oh, that's interesting. 
Are you looking for someone? Thank you, John. Even though it was a bit cutesy, again, that was a cutesy moment. And I wonder about those moments. Are they earned? It may have been earned in that moment. But that was, we earned a nice moment out of a problem. As I've said before many times, the problem is the solution. To... Victory of Ascaran domination. To you. I also had my best moment for a long time. Uh, and it, again, was a, a thing by chance, I think. It was in an, in an edit, in a cut. And it's the very, very final image of Scorpius with Sokozu on his knee. Now that day, uh, we were doing erotic asphyxiation with that leather strap. I saw it in LA when I was, when I was in LA earlier this year and I, I was watching it and I was pretty apprehensive because I know it's the final image of him, the last time we see him. Uh, but the cut is so hard and, and so final. What it said to me, and I cheered, what it said to me was, I just killed her. The girl who re rebuilt my coolant rod has been like a bit of a buddy. And again, the buddy thing, problematic. Problematic, he doesn't need buddies. He's just topped her. That's him. Now, whether that was a deliberate thing, you'd like to think it was. They've gone, we need to harden him up. It's the end, harden him up. Leave the audience with the real Scorpius. Or it was by chance, just by the cut. I don't know. I'll, I'll have a conversation with Prousey about it, because it was brilliant. I, I cheered and went, wow. Thank the Lord, you know, we leave him as we know him. For resisting the enemy? For not resisting your friends. Fans have asked him, that final scene, Wayne, did you actually really kill Sokozu? And I go, maybe.